This video is dedicated to anyone trying to make money online. If you are interested in creating a website, right? A website where people come to it and you make money. It's that simple. If you can create a website and people, you get traffic, right? People come to your website, you can make money. And that's what I'm gonna teach you in this video. It isn't terribly hard, no experience is required. Of course, it helps, I'll get into that later, but this is going to be an in-depth video to help you make passive income online. This is one of the most passive systems I've ever seen. I've owned a lot of businesses, a lot of different businesses, but online businesses can be the most passive. That means you can run this as a side hustle, right? A side hustle after you're doing your nine to five. Maybe one day this will enable you to break out of your nine to five so you can just focus on this. I know many people who've gone down that road. And if you don't know me, my name is Jesse Cunningham. I'm an expert SEO. So that means I specialize in search engine optimizations. Very large companies around the world hire our firm, hire me to help them get more traffic online because if they can get more traffic, they can make more money despite what they're selling. So in this video, I'm gonna show you if I were to start a new website today, what I would do, what things I would look out for, and how I would ramp up to make as much money as possible as fast as possible. Now, I want to encourage you to really focus on this video. It's gonna be a big video. It's gonna be a brain dump of what I've learned over the last 15 years, right? So if you're at home, get comfortable, take notes. This video will be segmented out to help you follow along. If you need to come back to it, use it as a resource. But realize, I've taken so much time to make this video because there's a lot of people asking a lot of questions. And this video is designed to answer your questions on how do people actually make money with websites, right? How do they do that? And if you want to do that, I'll give you the blueprint. Here is the blueprint. So here we go. Now, one of the most exciting parts about choosing a website is picking the niche. And a niche is merely this. What is the playground you're going to play in? What is the thing you're gonna talk about on your website? Because here's something very, very important. Most people, when they start in this space, don't realize your website cannot be about everything. You can eventually break out from what you're talking about. We'll get into that later in this video. But initially, you need to figure out hyper focus, right? Hyper focus on one thing. Do not say, I want to talk about baseball. I want to talk about tennis. I want to talk about dogs. No, no, no. You cannot do that. You will not be successful because first off, you'll compete against the big dogs. That's a terrible pun, but you'll, you'll compete against the huge companies that can actually go after terms like the best dog food. And let's say there's a million people per month searching for the best dog food. That means there's a lot of money behind it because these people searching it have what is called purchase intent. Therefore, you have a new website. You cannot go after those big, big terms. You need to go down further. The best dog food for a golden retriever. A new, a baby golden retriever. You see how we put a suffix on the end of the keyword? We hyper-focus down, 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 down. It has to get really focused. I had someone ask me recently, they said, Jess, look, I wanna help a lot of people, so I need to talk about these broad things in my niche. The problem is when you're starting out, you can't do that. You can't do it because you won't compete against the big companies. Yes, there's plenty of people in the world that say the best dog food. They type it into Google every day. But don't you think Petco.com already knows that and they're sitting on that term? I'll show you how to, to build content around a term. That kind of falls into SEO. But when you're picking a niche, listen to me, make sure it is a small niche. Yes. Your niche should be something you're excited about. It doesn't necessarily have to be something you're an expert in. In fact, I had someone reach out to me yet again, say, look, Jess, I have this disease. I have MS and I don't want to talk about MS. It's the only thing I've known for like the last 20 years, right? For the last 20 years, I've had MS, this debilitating disease. I can still type. I want to do a niche website. Can I talk about something I don't know? I said, yes, of course you can. Part of the fun of building a niche website is learning something new. That's what excites me at times, right? Oh, I get to learn about this new topic. I get to write a new article about it. You do not have to be a current expert in a niche to write about it. Now, I will caution you if you're going to do a YMYL topic, which is your money, 
your life, right? Think about uh, finance, think about insurance, think about health, fitness. These things are harder to break into because Google sees them as YMYL topics. If you have accreditation, say you're an insurance agent, say you're a physical therapist, you're gonna have an easier time, but you're going to have to prove that to Google and it still, yet again, takes time. Like everything in this space is going to take a little bit of time. Now, before we move off of niches, I want you to be very, very cognizant of a risk to niche websites right now. What is the risk? It's AI content, right? I created a tool called Word Galaxy that can spin up. We can create unique blog posts like this, super easy. So here's my question to you, which niches can you write about that have, have what is the word I'm looking for? Have, have protection, have resilience against AI, right? AI draws its knowledge upon LLMs. It's an LLM, which is a large language model. It reads the entire internet, or it did up to a certain degree. So it cannot talk about new things. So if there's products you wanna talk about that are coming out, AI has a very hard time touching these things because it's only trained to a certain date. On top of that, AI has a really hard time giving opinions, right? What are some things in life that only you could answer, your personal experiences, right? AI cannot go down to the river and have unique photos of you catching that catfish or you spending time with your family in the Adirondacks, right? These things, these personal experiences are going to become more and more important as time goes on. Because here's the thing, Google knows when it's getting fresh content and that comes down to images. Google even knows when this image has never been represented online before. And if you can supply Google with new data, new images, new insights, new opinions, it makes your life easier and it protects you against this wave of AI that's coming. So with a niche, pick something that you're going to be excited about, right? Because you're gonna be on this project for a year, two years plus. If it goes successful, you're gonna be married to this thing until you seek a buyout. Which by the way, the multiples right now on people buying niche websites that have passive income, it's pretty high. You'd be excited if you saw those figures. In this next section, let's talk about market research. So you have an idea, you have a niche that you wanna talk about, you know you're passionate about. How do you lean that up against data? How do you say, ooh, I wanna talk about this, but should I talk about this? Now, professional SEOs, people who do this for a living, we have a lot of tools at our disposal. SEMrush, Ahrefs, the list goes on, and they're 100, 200 bucks a month. That's a lot of money. But if that's not you, that's okay, because Google gives us one of the best free tools ever, and that's the search bar, right? Think about something you wanna write in your niche. We are talking about the best dog food. Let's say the best dog food for golden retrievers. If we type that into Google, who shows up at the top of the heap? What websites are being represented? If you see humongous petco.com type of companies, Forget about it. That's not something a new website should be touching anytime soon. Top level market research often looks like this. Write down a list of 20 different blog articles you want to write about, something that interests you in this topic. Just write them down, get them ready. And one by one, go into Google and type that into Google. See who are the top three competitors. And if you recognize really, really big companies, you need to back off of that keyword. And that's a keyword, quote unquote keyword. A keyword is not just a singular word, it can be a phrase. A keyword is merely what someone types into Google. Now listen to me, we need to go a step further with market research. Most people, and don't be like most people if you wanna succeed in this, but most people say, yeah, I've got a couple blog articles, I got like 20 of them, I got 20 I wanna write, I'm good, let's get to writing them, woohoo! I'm gonna use this AI tool, whatever it may be, and let's just post them. Do not be that person. What you need to do is take those questions, those blog articles, whatever they may be, that passed the initial test. You've already proven that there's not a lot of competition for these, right? You may have five to 10 different blog articles, but then you need to sit with them. Use your brain. Your brain is your most powerful tool. Do not become dependent upon tools. Sit there with those blog articles and say to yourself, what would someone ask 
After coming to this specific blog article about whatever it may be, the best dog food for golden retrievers, what would someone ask after they've read this article? What is something someone would ask during this article? Start to write those questions down because if you can start to make a mind map of your content, you're gonna be so far ahead of your competition. Once you've done that, you need to rinse and repeat step one. Take the new questions, the new blog articles, whatever they may be, type them into Google and see what the competition is. Is it a yes, there's a lot of competition, you need to delete it, you're not gonna write that thing. Is it a no, we're going to consider it, right? We're just trying to figure out what articles can we consider to write. Do not rush into writing articles right away. I'm telling you, it is not the way to be. Now, if you wanna get into the weeds even further and quantify whether or not these blog posts are a good idea to write or not, I have an advanced SEO masterclass. I show you how to use paid tools. I show you how to dig even further into Google, right? But for now, what I've described here, this is the first step that I always do for any keyword I'm going to write. This is an excellent place to start, an excellent way to begin your content plan. Now, I need to be very clear what a website is and what a website isn't. A website is just words on the screen. Think about this, it's just a book for somebody to read, to potentially be entertained by. It is not some wild piece of crazy technology that's inaccessible to you. You need to take a step back, think, can you write a blog post that entertains and informs somebody? Because if you can, that's all a website is. Some of my biggest clients are just excellent at providing valuable content. Google calls it helpful content. And if you can do that, if you can provide answers to all the questions in a uniform, succinct way, you're going to be way ahead of all the competitors. So that's top level market research in a nutshell. Figure out what you can actually write and rank for. But now let's talk about domain names, www.whatever.com. What kind of domain name should you have? And here's the thing, in the previous section, I was describing how you need to niche down. You cannot go after broad terms with a new website, it's very difficult. But with the URL, that's just the domain name, www.whatever.com, you can be a little bit more broad because here's the thing, as you have success, you may want to niche over into, say, a different dog breed, right? So if you had a website called www.goldenretrieverhealth.com, you can only talk about golden retrievers on that website. Could you have named the website something more generic? Probably. Would that have helped you in the long run? Probably, especially if you have plans to broaden your horizons. Remember the story about the person who wants to help everyone? Well, here's the opportunity for you to help everyone. Future-proof your website, make it a generic kind of broad URL so that in the future you have that opportunity. Now you may be asking yourselves, where can I get a domain name? Where should I purchase one? I purchase most of mine off of GoDaddy. Keep it simple. They have good-ish customer service. I've been pretty pleased with with them, godaddy.com has affordable domains, right? Don't purchase a crazy expensive domain. There's no purpose of doing that if you're a beginner, right? Just for branding, don't do that. Do something that's available for like 12, 15 bucks, right? And just get something that works for what you need. This is not a make it or break it situation unless you do something that pigeonholes yourself for years to come. And now that you've picked your domain name, you're happy about it, you've purchased it, where are you going to host it? And let me back up a second. I know there's Wix.com, I know there's all these other providers, but over half of blogs, all mine, which is millions and millions and millions, use WordPress. I'm going to encourage you to consider WordPress as your platform. It is a uniform platform. Everyone uses it, and I say everyone. The majority of people use it. When you go to sell your website, it's gonna be an interface that the buyer is accustomed to because every everyone's accustomed to WordPress. So the question is, what can we do? We need to find a host that does WordPress hosting, right? But what is a host? Let's back up a second. We need to find a host, but what is a host? A host is merely this. You have a book, 
right? You're creating a book, a virtual book. Who is going to show it to people? Who's going to make sure that thing is live online? And that costs money per month. I'm talking 20, 30 bucks a month. It costs money. But the host is a very important thing to make sure your website is fast because that matters for SEO. Make sure they have great customer service because you're going to have questions and make sure it's affordable. Now, I will tell you who I use for web hosting, but the first one to consider is GoDaddy.com. If you purchased your domain name through them, the www.whatever.com, you can also have managed WordPress hosting through GoDaddy. Like I said before, GoDaddy's pretty darn good with customer service. They give you a pin, they give you a customer service number, you actually talk to people. And every time I've talked to them, they've been pretty darn good. On top of that, they are affordable. It's an affordable price. It varies depending upon the day, the time, the deals. But check out GoDaddy's and make sure it's WordPress hosting. That matters a lot, WordPress. It has to signify WordPress. Otherwise, you can get something you don't need. SiteGround, this is a very affordable and very fast option for WordPress hosting. Check them out, SiteGround is very good. I have a lot of friends who are webmasters. These are people who host websites for clients around the world, right? They often use SiteGround because when you have multiple websites, you can host them there and it's affordable. So check them out. And number three on our list is Kingsta. It's who I often use. I think Kingsta is a little bit pricey, but I am okay with paying the price because the customer service rocks. I don't have to call them because when I type into their interface online, hey, I got a question about this. They respond and they're funny. They give you gifts and they're great to work with and they can recall previous conversations like a regular human. I love it. I don't feel like a number when I work with Kingstug. They didn't sponsor this video or anything like that, but that is the host that I prefer for WordPress hosting. Now let's talk about content creation. We know what we want to talk about. We're ready to have a blog. We have the hosting, but we need to actually create the content. Cool part is I like to do most of my work in Google Docs. It's free. It's easy to use. And as you scale your website, you can share docs with other people to collaborate. Now there's a defined format for blog posts and they're called headers, right? The top header is called the H1 header, makes sense. And then under that can be multiple H2s and under each H2 can have multiple H3s and so on and so forth. Consider it like a Russian, you ever seen those Russian nesting dolls, how they all fit within each other? In Google Docs, you can specify a block of text to be a header, an H2, an H1, an H3, because Google looks at these as headlines, right? A header is kind of like a headline. This section of the page is about this. This section is under that section like a subchapter. So realize you have to write in a very specified way. An easy way to learn this is yet again, go to your competitors. Look at, I mean, you've seen websites how many times, right? You've seen them, but now pay attention. It is blocked off in headers. Those are just sections. You need to write in that and pay very, very close attention to their lead-in sentences under each header. This is very important. We write for two people. Think about this, your website is for two entities. It's for the consumer, who hopefully is going to find your website, but it's also for Google, who needs to say, ooh, that website looks like it answers this query or keyword that someone typed into Google. Let's show it to them. Let's see how long they stay on the page. So we need to appease two entities when we're writing a blog article. And the key to doing that is how you structure your content. So headers and then lead-in sentences need to be very concise. They need to be very factual. They need to have the appropriate keywords in place. Never forget, blogging is merely becoming a writer. Yes, you have options now. You have AI assistant tools. Some AI tools can do it for you, but I always encourage that it takes a human touch. My clients, I have never posted a blog post that is 100% AI content. I do it on my personal websites to test it out, and I'm telling you the human touch matters a lot because if you wanna get technical, if you wanna get into the weeds, right, everything is based upon n-grams, NLP, natural language processors. This is how Google looks at words. It's like math, and they say, ooh, was that phrase used before? Is that the most likely phrase to be here at this current time? Ooh, maybe that's not very good. Maybe it's AI content, although Google has stated 
It doesn't mind AI content so long as it's helpful. So yes, I have the tool that we created, wordgalaxy.ai, but I still encourage people, yes, the tool expedites things, but go in there and make it your own because it's only going to help with your SEO. And that is your visibility. That is your website's visibility. Now this is a perfect opportunity. Let's talk about SEO. Let's talk about search engine optimization. First off, I'll say this. A lot of people miss the idea is you are gaining a new skill when you are learning these things. You're learning how to blog. That's great. That is a new skill. And then you're going to write content. That's a new skill. And then you're going to learn SEO because you've put in all this time into writing the content and you want to make sure people are actually finding it because there's nothing more frustrating than putting all this work into a website and there's an echo chamber. Nobody's coming, right? So SEO, search engine optimization, is the study of organic traffic. And organic traffic mostly comes from who? It mostly comes from the number one search engine in the world, which is Google. Com. Now there's different aspects of SEO. Some people love on-page SEO. That means the words on the screen. That's me. I love on-page SEO. I think it has the biggest impact. Some people love off-page SEO. That is like getting backlinks to your website. What is a backlink? It's just merely another website all the way over there pointing to your website. So they have a link that shows people, oh, check out your website. Google sees this and Google likes that because it builds authority. If all these other websites are pointing to your website, that must mean that you have some sort of authority in the topic you're speaking upon. Other things that SEO encompasses is website speed because Google cares about a good user experience. And if someone comes onto your website and it's slow as molasses, they're gonna bounce off. That's the term, bounce. And if someone bounces off your website, that's bad news. And Google knows this and they're gonna start to derank your posts. Now, luckily the hosts that we talked about, if you build them the right way, if you build your website the right way, which I'll get into, your website should be fast, right? But we'll get into that later. Now, circling back to on-page SEO, it all has to do with the structure of the words and which words you are including. Google, it's like, it's like a bag of words. I think Kyle Roof called it a bag of words theory, right? It's just a bunch of words on the screen and Google uses math to decipher them. So you need to know what is the primary keyword, what are, I don't know, you can call them children or semantically related keywords, LSIs, all these things. You can get into the weeds, big jargon terms. Bottom line is focus on helpful content. Answer all of the questions that this person on this particular page might have and make sure to do internal links. On-page SEO and internal links matter so much. Internal links is merely this. You have a link in your text, right? The golden retriever, blah, 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 blah. So on golden retriever, you have blue text. You highlighted it. You said, let's send them off to this article because it pertains to what we're talking here. So you keep them on your website, but you show users. I mean, you've clicked on these links before. It shows users that you have a great resource for whatever they're searching for. Now, before we move off of SEO, it's very important to say this. SEO, Google in general, it's all about competition. It's like one big thunder dome. Think about it. If you were the only website on Golden Retrievers and someone typed in Golden Retrievers, your website's coming up for everything. But that's not the case because there's thousands of websites on every single niche. And that circles back to our market research. That's why you need to find a niche that you can play inside of right? You can be here without getting clobbered by the big, huge companies that have big, huge budgets and a hundred different writers working for them. You probably are working yourself. You're not hiring out right now. Maybe you're using AI. That's cool. But realize this is a competition and no one cares that it's just you. We just all see numbers, data, SEOs live in data, right? And if they see a new website over there, oh, it's playing around. It found some good keywords. Oh, let's take those blog posts away from them. Let's rank for them. Let's take it. That happens realize this is a competition and you need to sharpen your sword however you can. But luckily, this is largely knowledge-based stuff. Being successful online is hugely based upon what knowledge you have acquired, right? Anyone can do this. I believe anyone can do this. It just takes hard work and it takes knowledge. Now, maybe this is something I should have hit on a little bit earlier, but what theme should you use in WordPress, right? I like WordPress a lot. I explained that, but I use Astra. 
Astra is so lightweight and it's so fast, right? To get Astra, you can just type in themes in WordPress and type in Astra, very easy. You can go to their website as well. I have a link in the description. I use Astra Pro for most of my websites. They're very easy to work with. They have these like done for you um, websites. So you can go in, it already looks nice and you can just change this, you can change that. It is a little bit of a learning curve to get inside of WordPress and customize. Like you're going to have to do some research on how to do that, but don't don't get crazy with it. Focus on SEO, focus on content that you can actually rank for. But for the best theme, the best WordPress theme, Astra is my vote. Now, maybe the most important aspect of this whole thing, let's talk about monetization, right? There's so many different ways to monetize a website, to make money online, which is almost passive. I say almost passive because nothing's ever passive, right? But anyways, how are you gonna make money online? I'll tell you the laziest way to do it, and lazy not in a bad way, in a passive way, is display ads. There's companies like Mediavine that will put display ads on your blog very, very easily. And depending upon what niche you're in and depending upon how much traffic you get and how long people stay on page, depends upon how much money you can make. And if you have a website with thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of visitors a month, that is very valuable for marketers, right? And they're gonna pay you money. And guess what? You did all the preliminary work, you did all the hard work to get people coming to the website, and now you're getting a check in the mail every month by doing nothing. You just have to upkeep the thing. Now, another way to make money is to have your own product. And I wanna get in the weeds for a second. With online stuff, you are not going to create desire, especially if you're a newbie, that is very hard to do. Listen to me, what do I mean by this? There is already a public sentiment of desire for different things. People want to know a finite thing about golden retrievers. There's only a certain amount of things they want to learn about that. There's only a certain amount of things they want to learn about baseball. There's some obscure thing that you might love and you want to post it, but guess what? There's no desire, no public sentiment. So focus on what is the existing sentiment. What do people want and meet them there? Don't try to make a new thing over here just because you want to do it, right? I know I'm being a little, little punchy with this idea, but I see it all the time. This is such a missed opportunity. What do people want? Go to them. There's people already having a party in this niche. Whatever niche you have, there's people that want a certain thing. Identify that thing. Create your own product. Something easy is some sort of PDF. Right, you can build a newsletter, and once you have a newsletter, you can sell things. So you could have a teaser on your website. Click here for the top 50 things about XYZ. They click here, they enter their email, and now you have a newsletter that you're building. Every time you send out the newsletter, hey guys, it's me, you have opportunity to send sponsorships. Right, People will pay you money. They'll pay you money to be part of your newsletter if you build it up large enough. And more importantly, if you have your own product, say you, you, you sell seeds for tomato plants, you could sell seeds for tomato plants off of your blog. Some huge companies started as blogs. Do not get pigeonholed just into the display ad factor. Now, something similar is you can offer a service. This is what I do often on my YouTube videos. Hey, do you need a done for you service for SEO? You wouldn't believe how many companies reach out to us now because of YouTube, right? Hey, Jess, I like what you're saying on uh, SEO. Can you help our company? Yeah, sure, I can, right? So a service is not a product. It's kind of a product, I guess, but a service. Offer a service that you can do digitally. What could it be? Consultant, wellness consultant, coaching, life coaching, all these different things. But it's all contingent upon the existing sentiment and desire of your audience. And lastly, sponsored content is another opportunity. Bottom line is, if you have traffic to your website, you have some sort of power because you have eyeballs. Think of the huge media companies. They know that power is in the eyeballs of the public. If you have a lot of eyeballs on your website, people may come to you. Hey, can I have a banner up there at the top? I'll pay you 1500 bucks a month. You'd be surprised. This happens a lot. And then you might get approached, hey, I'm a competitor of yours technically, and I kind of want to buy your website. What do you think? That happens too. So there's many, many ways to make money with your website. You just need to get creative. But it all, it all hinges on getting traffic to your website.
So earlier in the video, I said I would describe exactly what I would do if I were to start a blog right now. And truly, I don't know what niche I would go into. I know there's a bunch of good ones. Check out this video right here. This one's on my other YouTube channel. I did the top 10 best affiliate blog thing, you know, the niches you can consider. So check out that video. That's a good one. But what I would do, truly consider what I can put a me, what I can put a unique spin on. Think about what you can do. What is your personal thing that you, no one else in the world can talk about this. Like for me, no one else in the world can talk about my unique experiences living in Maryland, fishing in the Susquehanna River, right? That's just me. And I could bring my camera out there, have unique images, things like this matter. You can go off the wall and do something totally different too. But for me, I would future-proof myself. But there's a caveat here, right? Because oftentimes I like to go out and buy existing websites on forums where people are like, I'm done. I'm done. I don't want to do this anymore. And I, I say, I will purchase your website because I know there's value in things that take time because a lot of people just quit. And that's just a matter of life. You know, things get tough, people get impatient and they quit. So have, this is supposed to be a piece of encouragement to you. Realize this takes time. You're going to experience ups and downs in this whole thing. Google has it baked into their algorithm that this takes time. Some people call it the sandbox. Some people call it, what is the other one? The honeymoon phase. They've had people, John Mueller from Google, talk about this. It's a real thing and, and, and it's good in some aspects too. So that goes back to the point. Subscribe to this channel and also check out my other channel if you wanna get deeper into the weeds of SEO. But circling all the way back, if I were to start a new blog, what would I do? I would do everything I described in this video and I would really, really focus on the top level market research. I am staying there a long time and I'd actually probably build out 200 blog posts and have some sort of mind map of how every blog post connects. And when I say connects, I mean, how do they link together? Literal internal links. And keep in mind, internal links is, you know, you have an opportunity, you're on this blog post, and there's a blue, you know, link in this anchor text, you can click, boop, and now the person is over here on this new page. That matters a lot. I would spend so much time and verify that the competition is not huge for the niche I'm considering, because the amount of time, time alone, is going to be huge when you undergo this process. It's not a huge money outlay, it doesn't have to be, although you can start buying backlinks, you can start doing this, it can get expensive, it can get very expensive quickly. But if you're gonna bootstrap, right, you're gonna do this yourself, it doesn't have to be expensive in the conventional manner. It's gonna be very expensive on your time. So spend a lot of time, rewatch that whole thing on a market research, and then get into the weeds. Check out the other channel. I hope you liked this video. I hope there was a lot of value here. I'm gonna be doing a lot of these videos, so please subscribe, like, put a comment in because that really helps with YouTube's algorithm. Um, I also have a newsletter on Jesse Cunningham, SEO.com. I mentioned the masterclass as well. That's for advanced SEO techniques. Anyone who purchases the masterclass gets free access for life to wordgalaxy.ai, which is the AI content creation tool. There's a lot of things going on. But anyways, I appreciate you. Thank you for watching, and I'll check you on the next one.